the bad news is is that um, it's a thing with an integrated graphics card and the thing is if I turn off the graphics card it crash it doesn't crash but I have to have it turned on to use of Amazon Studio. So it's not Amazon, Android Studio. So it's like a good news, bad news thing. Okay, here's my plan for today. Um, and I've been having trouble grading stuff because of this, because of this crashing and all that, and I've been troubleshooting it. So a few people have turned some things in. Uh, that I looked at trying to crash, and I worked on it as long as I could until I threw up my arms today. I probably will grade it in one of our labs tomorrow. Um, question, the, what we're going to do first is we're going to talk about um, the blackjack uh, game, and, and specifically I'm going to ask you questions that you have. I'm not, I don't have a lecture prepared or anything. We talked about the general design talked a little bit about the GUI, we talked about, um, we actually showed sort of a, 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 a rough draft, a prototype of the GUI, and that's available on Canvas. So what I want to know now is your questions, and I'll take the questions as long as we have questions. If we are out of questions or we don't have any questions, I'll go on to the next topic. Next topic will allow you to see how well you know the countries of the world. All right, so I was going to say geography, but it's not really geography, but we'll see. So does anyone have questions about the blackjack, either UI or design? All right, I felt obligated to spend a little bit of time about this uh, and, 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 and all that because this is a little bit bigger programming assignment, so I wanted to design first. Um, the design was due the 13th, so I hope to get to anyone that has turned it in by next class. Um, all right. So, nations of the world. We have a guess the country game where we show a flag and you have to identify what country it's from. All right, there's a whole lot of new stuff in this one, so we'll, we'll spend some time going over this one. By the way, if you do have questions about the blackjack assignment, Thursday I'll probably do the same thing. I'll probably start class talking about that, seeing if you have any questions, and then we'll go on to, um, I doubt if we'll finish this app today, so we'll go on to this application. All right. So this is a little game that came up where we show a flag and you have to identify what country it is. And it's multiple choice. All right. This is good practice because next year is an Olympic year. All right. This one, I never even heard of one of the countries. And I think it's between two countries, my guess on this one. Oh, I got to drag it over to the other screen. Okay, so guess the country. Is that Qatar, Iceland, Central African Republic, or St. Kitts and Nevis, which I have never heard of in my life? Okay, the, I'm thinking it's one of these two. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not Iceland. I kind of think I know what Iceland looks like. I'm pretty sure it's not Qatar, which is a Middle Eastern country. So it's either Central Africa. So let's try this one first. Hey, you got it right. The only reason I thought that is because it had green, which is, it was going to be my geography nerd coming out, but green <laughs> Okay. Got it. This one, this one, I think is easy. Uzbekistan, Pakistan, Vietnam, or Cyprus. I'm going with Pakistan, and it is. All right. Ooh, I think I got this one. Venezuela, Iceland, Guinea-Bissau, 
and Austria. Uh, Pardon me? That is Iceland. Yeah. Yay! We're on a roll. Whoops. Oh, I, I accidentally clicked Hungary. That's not what I would have guessed. So San Marino, Malta, or Lesotho. I want to pick something wrong. I'm going to, I'm going to click Malta. I don't think it's Malta, but I want to show you what happens if you get it wrong. It shakes its head at you. Tells you you got it wrong. All right, San Marino. Yay. That is Australia. All right. Notice, too, the, the fade in and fade out. So I want you to get a sense of all this, because I think it's good to sort of note these behaviors. So later on when we start seeing code, um, even if we're not ready to delve into that code, we can look, say, well, remember that fade in, fade out? Yeah, that's what that does, and then we can come look at it later. This one, it's not Luxembourg. Uh, so I'm going to click Luxembourg on purpose just to see the animation again. We'll go with this one. And it was. If you don't know this one, then... <laughs> it's America's hat. <laughs> and finally, this one. I'm going to guess Cook Islands. Ooh. We already guessed that one, so we know it's not that one. Solomon Islands or Congo? I'm going to go with Solomon Islands. Well, I'm going to go with Congo. All right. And we have two more questions. Notice the way this works. You go until you get it right, which, you know, I don't know. Your, your, your accuracy then is based on how many guesses. So you got 10. It's assuming you got all 10 of them right, how many guesses you took. So if you took 20 guesses to get all 10 of them right, it gives you, like, I think, a 50%. So I don't know about that. That's not the Sudan. It's probably not Ivory Coast. I'm going to go with Serbia and Montenegro. All right. And finally, Falkland Islands, Qatar, Zambia. I'm going to go with Falkland Islands. I don't think it's Peru. Zambia? There we go. So it took us 16 guesses to get 10 right. So that is, yeah, that's 5 out of 8, so that's 62%. All right, so that's how it does the calculation. So how many guesses it took you to get 10 right? 10 divided by number of guesses, that's your percentage. Reset the quiz. All right, a couple other things about this. Notice we have a little settings guy up here. The settings guy, we can display how many choices there are. So we had, what, four choices? You could choose two, four, six, or eight. You click on that, you get a dialogue. All right. If you change it, it resets the quiz automatically, which makes sense. There's also, you can limit it to certain regions of the world. So you click that, you can limit it to North America. Okay. And now the quiz will restart as we go back. All right. Bahamas? Okay, we're not going to go through and play the whole thing, but you get the idea. So what is new about this? All right? And, and what is old about this? Let's make some observations about this. All right? There's a random element involved, obviously. There's a random element two different ways, right? There's a random flag that is displayed, and then random choices are displayed. All right? So... Depending on what we have said, either there's two, four, six, or eight. Now, one thing about the random choices is they're not really 100% random, right? Why aren't they 100% random? Well, we better put the right answer on the list of things. So if we're displaying two uh, options or four options or six options, one of them has to be the right option. We're not randomly picking six options. We're picking the right answer and we're randomly picking five others. And also, if we're smart, we're not putting the right answer in the same place each time, because that'd be pretty easy to figure out if it was always the first option or the second option or the third option. 
all right? So that's different. Um, the layout is at least partly dynamic, all right? It's partly dynamic a couple different ways, you know. It's dynamic as far as what image we display. It's dynamic as far as how many of these options we show, and of course the specific value of those options. There are dialogues, so there is a settings menu and dialogues. Um, and then there's a cute little animations. When we pick something, the shake, if it's wrong, we get it right, it sits there for a minute, and then it gives us a fade in and fade out. So these are some of the things that are different for this application than previous applications we've looked at. So let's look. resources. Let me close these guys down. First of all, we have a new one. We have an animation. And it's described in an XML file. Um, pretty common. Most of the things that we have as far as resources go that are files are stored as XML. Simply because of the power of XML. Now, we're not going to spend too much time looking at it right now, but just to take a quick glance at it. What the heck? I think it just died. XML file that has essentially a series of commands. And we'll look at these. It's actually easier than you'd think. All right. But we'll take a look at, at these and take a look at how it gets played. One nice thing about this is we're defining the animation um, in an XML file. We can then apply that animation to a bunch of different things. We could have, for example, the buttons shake their head at you in addition to the flag shake its head at you or whatever. So we've just de defined this animation. It's stored, uh, the commands that we execute are stored in an XML file. We can go and we can apply that animation to anything. We have our color file, which we had before. Drawables. This is a vector drawing that represents the gear. All right, the gear for the settings at 24 dp. What's the difference between a vector drawing, a vector graphic, and the other kind of graphic? What's the other kind of graphic called? A bitmap. Yeah, and I don't mean the Microsoft BMP format. It's called a bitmap. What's another word for bitmap? Raster, all right? Not Rasta, so it's not like a reggae thing. It's raster, R-A-S-T-E-R. What's the difference between a, and none of that's really critical, but what's the difference between a vector and a bitmap graphic? Right. 
Exactly. Essentially, in a nutshell, a raster or bitmap is effectively a array, a matrix. And again, they do things to compress it. There, so there's JPEGs and GIFs and PNGs. All those use some kind of compression to get the file size down. Like if you had a giant block of white, they wouldn't store each pixel as white. They'd store something that indicated that there's a bunch of white in this area or whatever. But with a bitmap, you essentially are storing values for pixels. All right. A vector more or less shows, uh, shows the instructions to draw something. All right. And again, uh, let me just real quickly do this. So if I had a bitmap or a raster graphic, it might be a circle that looks like this, let's say. But really, if we like x-ray, not x-ray, but like magnify the pixels, they would look like this. They'd be in an array, a grid, and they really would look like this. If we, if we were going to like really magnify this. Now, what does that have to do with anything? If you resize a raster image or bitmap image, what happens? You lose quality, right? Take a picture on your phone and then use a photo editing to make it twice as big. On a regular size, a curve might look like this, smooth curve. If you expanded it, it would kind of look almost like a staircase, jagged edges. That's simply because there's not enough information to make a big image out of a little image. All right? There's not enough pixels to fill it in. So whatever photo editing application you use sort of guesses at what those extra pixels are going to be. And again, it's not perfect, but it will it'll make it bigger, but you'll lose quality. It'll look blurry and jagged edges and all that. A vector graphic isn't like that. A vector, a vector graphic contains more or less the instructions or the vertices uh, of the drawing that you're going to draw. And so it wouldn't contain for example, the, let's say we wanted to do a, a vector graphic for a circle. It wouldn't be all the pixels of a circle. It would be instructions to say, make a circle with a radius of 10 or whatever. So draw it as 10. You want to make it bigger, what do you do? You change the radius to 50. It redraws it based on the function of drawing a circle. So I can make a vector, di a vector drawing bigger or smaller without losing the quality, is the bottom line. So that's why they're using a vector graphic for the, um, for the gear, all right? Simply because it resizes better. All right, it's a long explanation for a short answer, but I didn't want to like leave it a total mystery why they chose to do that. So effectively, that's what these things are, is these are the instructions to gear over here. Shut down again. <laughs> We've seen how the code works. I'm going to work off of this machine and just bring it up in a text editor. Or we have, well, we have Android Studio on this. I'll bring it up in Android Studio. I just won't run it because it takes three years to bring up the emulator. If I ever need to run the emulator, I'll run it on this and just show it to the class. Hopefully they will have my old laptop or my new laptop fixed over the next few days. It drowned in an accident.
So let me bring this. I am at least get through the resource files and maybe start looking at the activity. Posted this one to Canvas. We can go and look for Deedle Android Studio Examples Third Edition. they used to have is the waiter waiting thing before the circle that goes around. Hourglass? Okay. That's what I thought. It's called what? Vexology? Wow. That's a good word.
one image, uh, uh, it's a simple enough image that it can be drawn. All right, so like, for example, if you had a photograph of something, you know, you can't really do a photograph, a vector photograph, all right? But like something like a, a, a icon or a symbol, it's, you know, it's easy to do a vector and then it's perfect. You don't have to worry about it because it will redraw it every time. going to take that long to unzip this file? Uh, let me try to do this. Let me just try to pull the one that we want, the flag quiz. There we go. extra time it takes drawing this. Because I swear, when I downloaded these on my Mac, I double-clicked the zip file and they were there. <laughs> you know, it wasn't like, you know, I didn't get a nice graph, but it was there pretty instantly. Okay. Finally. Open the flag quiz. I'm going to go here. Actually, while it's doing that, I can just open the files up in the editor. So we were looking, we looked at the animation, we looked at the drawable, which is a vector graphic. Let's look at the layouts now. Notice they do have layouts for different sizes, at least for one of the XML files. There's actually several XML files. There is an activity main, activity settings. So there's two different activities. There is a content main and a content settings. There's a fragment main and a fragment settings. All right, let's look at the activity main to start out. And I'll open it in Notepad++. In 
It is a app bar layout. That was the bar on the top where we put the settings icon. And uh, there's a toolbar uh, for it as well. And then we have the layout, um, uh, the, the content main. So we did similar to what we did in the other example, the Twitter search, where we have a sort of a, a file that we include. That just allows us to keep this simple, and the main layout for the game is contained in content main. We do the same thing, I'll bet, with uh, activity settings. All right, same thing. Coordinator layout, slightly different layout, but we have a content uh, settings uh, that we bring in. The fragment that we have consists of I'm about to boo them. They have a bunch of rows for buttons for as many buttons as you can have. So you can have a total of eight, so there are four rows of two buttons each. Boo. <laughs> Why don't we like that? Why am I booing them? Yeah, it, it, it seems like it's the brute force way to do it. It would be much more elegant instead if we had simply an area and did something similar to what we did in the other example where we um, inflated that button as many times as we wanted to then we wouldn't have to give them the choice of 2, 4, or 8. We could give them the choice of 2 to 8, but we could have three choices, four choices, five choices, whatever. And we could figure out a way to um, add the buttons there. But alas, they didn't do that. Probably makes it simpler to code, but it's, it's less maintainable, less scalable. All right? And then we have a fragment for, let's see how this, let me go back to activity main. That had the content main. Let's see what was in the content main again. The content main consists of this fragment. Um, a fragment is something that you can reuse in other contexts. So I'm not really sure why they used a fragment here, but, but again, they did. Um, they could have had the include to include directly that fragment. Um, when we look at the code, we'll see the differences between that and, and, um, and uh, possibly we'll see the differences between that or see maybe some reason why they did that. So the main layout really consists of three parts. The, con the, the, uh, the activity main, the content main, and the fragment main. The activity main is really just sort of a shell. It says that there's going to be a toolbar on the top of the page and so on. The content main is really nothing. It just says that that's going to be consist of a fragment that we bring in. And the fragment main is where all the actual stuff is. So the flag image, the score, and all that uh, is in there. All right, and I would imagine the settings is the same thing. So, menu, what can we tell this is just glancing at the code a little bit? What does this use? This uses the icon. Was that icon that drawable? That was a vector. So this is the menu on the main activity that, and again, it even says it's associated with the main activity, that displays that little um, gear up in the right side of it. So it gets the drawing from the drawable, uh, which is a vector drawing.
Here's our icons. Here's our values. We have uh, our arrays, our colors, our styles, and so on. We actually have a regions list and a region list for settings. Interesting that there should be two of them. All right, does it make sense to me? Again, maybe when we see the code, we'll see a reason for it. And finally, an array that's going to be used to populate uh, our settings. So these two are going to be used to populate the settings. This one, I'm not really sure what it's going to be used for. I don't know why we couldn't use the same array twice. All right, colors. We define the colors that we want for different things. Dimension strings, styles, those serve the purposes that we've done before. Finally, there's an XML. And the XML is storing the preferences. All right. It'll be interesting to see if we run this. My guess would be that if we run this and close it, that it saves this XML data somewhere, so that if we run it the next time, all right? So this is, this is an XML to use to store uh, the preferences. This is a step up than what we did before. How did we store our stuff before? We stored it as simply strings in the, um, God, what was that called for persistence for the Twitter search? The shared preferences, all right? My guess is that we can store an addition of strings, we can store, store XML. That's a step up, right? Because with XML, we can, we can uh, store structure. I don't think there's anything necessarily about this that would require us to do that, uh, uh, use XML. But if they did use the preferences that way, it would be a, a good demonstration of something new. Arrays, region, list, arrays. They have the same thing for the guesses, but they use the same array, though. I think what this is, is um, if any of you have done web programming with like a drop down on a web program, um, you oftentimes for, for a drop down box, let's say, uh, within a web page. You have the thing that you show the user, and then you have the value that's sort of behind the scenes. All right? So, for example, uh, you, you wanted to do a search by department at LC. All right? It would show the full department name because no one knows our codes and abbreviations. Right? So it would say engineering, business, and information technology, health, uh, health and social sciences. Uh, and, you know, arts and humanities, math and science. It would show the full name that's descriptive, where behind the scenes it would be a value. So maybe the engineering and business uh, and IT is code number 133. Well, no one knows what 133 is, so you show the one thing, but the code behind the scenes is another value. That's what this is doing here, it appears. And it's just really the same thing. In other words, if you pick Africa, the value is Africa. All right, so I'm not really sure why they did two uh, different arrays. Okay, let's look, continue to look at this. Under assets. Okay, assets, they have a folder for each of the images. All right. The reason for that is, remember, we can, uh, we can pick uh, the regions that we want. So if we pick Africa and Asia, for example, it will go in and it will use all the images from Africa and all the images from Asia. It also, though, includes the name of the file uh, to have the region, a dash, and the country name. Well, when we look at the code, we'll see why they do that. 
because it, that, that seems a little redundant, but again, they may have a good reason for doing that within the code. All right. And they follow that convention for all of the different uh, regions. So it's in a folder that's the name of the region, and the, the file name for the flag is a region dash country name dash PNG. All right, so let's look at our activity and see how far we get with that. We have Sure, why what that XXX is, but we'll take a look. We have our main activity. My guess is that XXX is an old garbage file that got included because if you look at it, it's virtually the same as this. And we also have a main activity fragment. We have a uh, settings activity and a settings activity fragment. What do we define an activity as again? We define it as a screen that you're showing the user and ask them to do something. So that's why it's two activities. All right. And if you notice, how did we get back to the other one? We click the back button. So the back button takes you to the previous activity. So we have our main activity. We press the settings. That fires off a new activity. And to get to the original activity, we go back. So let's look at the main activity. All right. Oh, shared preferences again. So it's, remember, it's going to remember our choices. We have uh, an intent. What do we use intents for? Well, like 95% right, a, a request for another activity. So it could even be within the same app. So, for example, we're going to use an intent when we want to open up the settings. All right. So even within the same app, it's saying I want a new activity. All right. There's some other things. There's a preference manager, a few other things, a menu, and finally toast. What is toast? Uh, yeah, it's a little small pop-up notification. And you can use that for debugging purposes as well. All right. So. Let's look at this. We have declared a couple of constants, one for choices and one for regions. This I'm sure we're going to use to look up something in the shared preference for this. So the name of the thing for choices in our shared preferences is going to be called pref number of choices. For regions, it's going to be pref regions to include. We have notice that we have a phone device used to force por uh, portrait remote. So this does some device detection to see if we're on a phone, and it will force us to be in portrait mode, um, as opposed to us being on a tablet when it would allow us to switch between portrait and landscape. And we have a Boolean that says, did the preferences change? And we initialize it to true. So on create. Excuse me. We call the super classes create to make sure that gets done. We set our content view, which is our activity main. We define a toolbar, or actually we find uh, we find the toolbar within our activity. So find view by ID, our ID toolbar. <coughs> so we find the thing that has an ID of toolbar. And then we set support action bar to that toolbar. So that lets Android know that, hey, this guy is serving the role of toolbar. We set the default manager for shared preferences.
all right? So that's the default values in the app shared preferences. Where does it get them from? It gets them from that XML file. So the defaults are to show all regions and to uh, have four choices. Register listener for shared preference changes. So if the shared preferences are changed, we're setting a listener for that. So we're registering with our shared preferences a change uh, listener. So that if it changes, some code's going to fire off. We do some calculations to determine the screen size. Based on that, we determine if it's a phone device or not. And if it's a phone, uh, if it's a phone device, then we set so that it can only be in portrait mode. After that occurs, we execute the on start. If preferences changed, which the first time they will have changed because we set the default, we go and grab a pointer to the main activity fragment. What's the main activity fragment? The main activity fragment is um, essentially everything that we saw on that screen. All right? And there's a different way to grab it than find view by ID, because a fragment is not a view, all right? So we don't use, we use a similar thing, find fragment by ID, and we cast that to main activity fragment. We then set, based on the preferences, how many rows we're going to see, what regions we're going to see, and then we restart the quiz. All right? That code lives where? The code lives associated with a fragment. So that code is the main activity fragment. Here's sort of the idea of a fragment as compared to just having a view. A fragment is a collection of views that we can have code associated with. So it's almost like a little mini activity, but it's one that we could share between several different activities. All right? So this, if you notice this fragment, has a lot of stuff that we would have seen previously in our, um, in our activity. It has a variable for the number of guesses. It has the uh, list of files that we're going to use, list of regions, string for the correct answer, string for the linear uh, layout, or not a string, a, a pointer to the linear layout, a pointer to the different text views, a pointer to the image view, and all that. Well, one of the methods on this is update guess rows. So remember, that got called right after we are starting the application. What does that do? That simply shows or hides the number of rows. So it makes those rows disappear. So we hide all the guest buttons, and then we make visible the rows that we want to see. Update reasons, regions essentially does the same thing. It grabs from the share preferences the regions that we've selected. All right? And then we reset the quiz. All right? Notice how there's not a lot of code in the activity. Why is that? Because we have put all the code 
load in the fragment. And that fragment we can then go and we can deploy on a number of pages. It's almost like what we did in the blackjack design where we had a rules object, all right? And the rules object and our activity isn't going to do a lot. Our activity is simply going to interact with the rules object a great deal, all right? We could almost do the same thing with the uh, blackjack and make a blackjack fragment, all right, that would contain a certain UI and would contain the certain set of code that we would have for that. So we could almost do that with that if we wanted to, all right. I wanted to go a little longer today because we had the delays due to the technology and so, and so that. But this is a good place to, to, to start, or to stop, rather. Um, I will make a point to post this so that you, or you can go to Deedle site. And, and is everyone familiar where Deedle site is? Um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I will post a link to that, and you can download them if you want. Uh, so I'll post that to Canvas right after class. Um, and you can download this. What I would do. Uh, for next time is to look at the code that happens and reset quiz because there's a lot of stuff going on here. We're loading a bunch of flags. We're lo loading a bunch of um, country names and so on. And we're going to generate then our rows uh, of buttons. And we're going to make sure that one of the buttons has the correct answer and the other three or four or three or, or two or one or three or however many buttons there are have incorrect answers. So if you can, re if you can review for next time the code starting in reset quiz, how we initialize the quiz, that's where we'll pick up uh, reviewing um, on Thursday. Of course, if you have any questions about Blackjack, I'll address those as well. Are there any questions at this point? All right. Is anyone staying for lab? Okay. All right. We'll see you over in lab.